Hello everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to talk with uh, an OG, a, a legend of the internet. I, I remember when I used to be young and uh, was playing Second Life. And uh, actually right here is Philip Rosdale, the founder of Second Life. Oh my God. Thanks for having me. I'm here. <laughs> But is Second Life still here? Yes, is it is. It is. Second Life is as big as it's ever been, which is the crazy thing. But it's one of those ideas that Everybody got excited about it almost 20 years ago, and now it's still uh, the same size as it was then. So I, I can see people are talking a lot of metaverse today, but you're actually uh, the, the original metaverse thing that we, we used to have. And I was thinking, where did it go? It didn't go anywhere. It just, uh, got, I don't know, what, what actually happened? Because it used to be the, the thing, like 15 years ago, something like that. Well, fifth, yeah, right. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it felt like everyone was going to move into the virtual world. I, I thought that as well, you know, as the CEO and founder. Um, and what happened was it appeal. It is very appealing. And in the case of Second Life, it's a very good experience, but only for a small, a very small percentage of people. Most people are still not comfortable being avatars. We're doing what we're doing right now in the real world. And the virtual world still doesn't let us do what we're doing right now. It's not good enough. Hmm. So if it's not good enough and you've been doing this for such a long time, what do you think about the whole metaverse thing nowadays? Well, the metaverse problems, the, the problems that kept Second Life from growing a lot bigger, from going to, from millions of people to billions of people are the same problems today, actually. They haven't changed. And so what I say is that the opportunity for the metaverse is huge. It is the same that we've all, you know, thought of over the years, but the technical problems that will keep it from growing are the same that affected Second Life. So right now, I think we're going to have to wait a lot longer than people think to have a metaverse. That was uh, the thing I was afraid of myself because we just witnessed uh, Mark Zuckerberg getting legs, finally. <laughs> the <laughs> legs. My, the legs are one of the best things and, I, and the legs mean a lot. You know, right now we're standing and talking to each other and I'm, my, body is, my body is turned and my head is turned and I have my shoulders. These are examples of communication that are very important and we can't capture them yet. The reason that avatars in Oculus don't have legs is because the Oculus Rift The Quest can't see where your hips are, so it doesn't know how to put your legs. So even if it extrapolates, even they do something in code, it doesn't resemble real life. And you've, you've been trying to do that. You've been trying half of your lifetime, maybe? Yes, exactly. So I've, I can't believe it, but I've worked for, you know, Second Life has been around now for 20 years. And I am, you know, have a science background, uh, physics, computer science. I've been working on this stuff for my whole career, and these are very, very hard problems. So are you looking at these guys uh, promoting and talking about the metaverse, the metaverses, uh, uh, the, I don't know, the VR and everything? And you look at them and you say, what? Well, getting started, eventually, eventually we are going to spend some of our time and do some things that we do today in virtual worlds. I think it's a few years out. I think it makes sense for some of the, well, I think uh, avatars on desktop computers and laptop computers, actually, I think because of the cameras, will probably get a lot better in the next, say, five years. I think the VR headsets that we see Facebook uh, demonstrating, Meta demonstrating, that's going to take more like 10 years for them to get good enough to, for until you and I are wearing them to have this interview. 10 years. At least. I think so. So if I'm investing in Metaverse, it should be a very, very long bet. Exactly. But, you know, for some of the companies, for example, that you see at events like these, um, it does make sense to make some early investments and try to understand what's going to happen. Because once we are able to communicate in an online space like this, of course, the world is going to change a lot from that. And I believed it in 2006 and I believe it now. But it, we do have a ways to go. Are you actually expecting to see it in your lifetime? Because uh, Meta is throwing tens of billions at it. Uh, the people that are investing, the investors are not so happy about it. Are we going to see a startup doing it better than Meta eventually? In terms of the question, going back to what you said, am I going to see it in my lifetime? I think the answer is I don't know. I wish, I wish the answer was yes. The reason I don't know is because I think that the problems with making us feel comfortable and communicate as avatars 
are science problems that we don't have solutions to. So it's a little bit like space travel or something like that. We really don't know how to solve the problems. And so even $10 billion a year from Facebook will not solve a science problem. You have to wait until the science gets done and somebody makes something magical and then it works. And we're not there yet on the experience of avatars. That's disappointing because everybody is, prom is promoting uh, some version of the metaverse. We even hear about Apple doing some goggles and stuff like that. Everybody's working on something. Um, do you see uh, a solution in the shape of, I don't know, Neuralink, uh, Elon Musk's Neuralink, to just to bypass the GPU and go straight to the brain? I love the Neuralink idea, but so as far as I understand it, and it's not my area of specialty, but uh, you know, drilling a hole in your head to put wires in your brain is something that is going to be important in the next 10 years for people that are handicapped, but it's not something you're going to do. I ask you, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, if I, were, if I were impaired, if I had a handicap, yeah, I might do it. But eventually uh, the AI will catch up. We hear about quantum computing, biotech and all that. Why is the VR catching up so slow? Where is the science problem actually? The science problem really is that it's getting, it's, it's, it's allowing me to express myself in the way that I do with my body to you. And we either have to fix that by going directly into the brain itself or by doing a better job of things like knowing where our hips are, like we were talking about. And both of these are significant challenges. For example, you're holding a microphone up to my mouth right now to really be comfortable talking to each other in VR we both need to have good microphones very close to our mouths. And what if there's another person in the room and they have a microphone and you're crosstalk between those microphones? These are science problems that are very hard to solve. Okay, even the lighting, the colors, the rendering, the, and let's not forget 95% of all communications is nonverbal. It's not what we say. So is this the actual bridge we need to cross in order to get a real sense of the metaverse? That's exactly right. You're, you're doing my interview for me. I mean, 95% of communication is nonverbal. The, 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 the question, the, the thing that will happen when we know the metaverse is ready is when somebody walks into a room as an avatar, not speaking, and you see them and you know, oh, that's my friend okay. from their movement. And we're not at the point yet where that's true. And I think that while it is not true, it makes people too uncomfortable to be in virtual worlds. And so, we're going to get there bit by bit, but yes, it's too early to throw your whole company into the metaverse. Okay. Thank you for your, your, your honesty. I don't want to keep you for too long. I know you need to catch a plane, catch some sleep before that. Uh, you've, been, you've been attending the Web Summit in Portugal and now you're in Paris. You're a well-traveled man. Would you dream of doing this in the metaverse eventually? Because they talk about having this kind of events in the metaverse and I haven't seen a good one yet. Exactly. And that's another example of we will know that metaverse technology is mature when we're able to have an event like this in the metaverse and we're still not. And, and, and at the end of COVID now or, or toward the end, people are traveling again, which is unfortunate in terms of environmental concerns, but it shows you the problem that we still have to get face to face to really understand each other. And I hope that we can change that. It's been my whole career to do it, but it's still a long road. I, still, uh, I feel blessed that I got the chance to meet you in person, in, in the flesh, like they used to say when we were young. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for all the insights. And uh, have a safe travels. Thank you very much. That's so great. thank you for watching. Uh, you know what to do. As usual, hit the like, share and subscribe buttons. And we'll see you for the next one.